Hello everyone, I am Rupashri AP. I am from uh, Mysore School of Architecture, Mysore. Today I will be covering on uh, uh, water supply and sanitation that is module 3. Uh, so we will start with the presentation. So in module 3 we will be covering plumbing. In module 1 and 2 uh, there is a vast coverage of uh, water supply and uh, sanitation with respect to the city level how and how it has been uh, transferred from one place to the another place. So here in plumbing we are dealing with in detail that is uh, in particularly one house or one building how the plumbing can be done. So what all we are going to cover is in plumbing we will be studying uh, water supply and piping, hot and uh, cold, hot water, cold water and flushing water, piping in sunken areas, fall ceiling areas, how the water pi how the pipes are uh, uh, going under fall ceiling areas, shaft, the sizes of shaft and how the drainage from the building is being connected that is uh, generally you know that in the drainage we have uh, floor traps, drains, P trap, bottle traps, single stack. So these are the drainage uh, details which we are going to cover and in with respect to the building we are going to give we are going to discuss about how the stacking happens that is single stack two stack cross venting with for, for that stacking and uh, fixture venting then we are going to discuss about materials of construction like GI galvanized iron and PPR pipes PB CPVC composite pipes copper flow control walls in that flow control walls we are going to cover up gate wall globe walls butterfly walls pressure reducing walls and station pipe supports hangers fixing and also in this module we are going to end it with plumbing of small houses so that will be the syllabus for your uh, module 3 so in general we know what is plumbing right so in plumbing plumbing uh, to define it in general terms this is the definition taken from wikipedia so plumbing is an any system that conveys fluids for a wide range of applications plumbing is generally nothing but it could be anything it could be hvac it could be um, it could be waste removal, it could be potable water, drinking water, anything. Generally plumbing means it is a system which conveys fluids from uh, for a wide range of application. The application could be anything. Basically how the fluids are transferred from one point to the another. So that covers under plumbing, that is plumbing. So plumbing uses pipes, generally what we refer plumbing is for water supply, drainage, is what we refer in general terms ok. So this what all we use while doing plumbing we use pipes we use walls we use all the other plumbing fixtures we use tanks other apparatuses to convey fluids. While we are doing HVAC and waste removal and potable water where we generally use fluids for buildings from uh, for any purpose. So we use pipes and these other uh, fixtures that is called plumbing. So in plumbing you saw that plumbing is wide uh, coverage. So it covers water supply, it covers drainage, it covers sanitation, it covers uh, HVAC, right. So in plumbing we will have uh, uh, we will discuss first about potable water that is water supply, clean water how the water can be supplied from one point to the another with respect to the building level. So what do we consider while we are uh, providing water from one, one place to the another. So in the module 3, uh, module 2 we covered about uh, different systems how the water is supplied from city level to the buildings, individual buildings over the city. So after coming into the city how the water is taken from the mains and then transferred into the building. So how do we calculate what size of pipe is required, what size of pipe is required for uh, plumbing or water supplying 
it depends on many factors those factors could be very important factor is daily water demand we need to estimate how much daily water demand is used consumed per house okay that has to be estimated first then it also we also have to check about required flows of for various water supply fixtures and probable simultaneous demands this is something which we have to look at probable simultaneous demand simultaneously now say for example we have uh, so many flows and then people are using simultaneously at the same time at different different points of the building so we have to estimate that also so how how much probable simultaneous demand is required for all the fixtures used in the buildings then supply adequate quantity of water now we know that daily water demand we know we know probable simultaneous demand for the building with respect to the users and fixtures so the next step is supply adequate quantity of water now we have to supply the water so what is the total uh, quantity of water which is required for the building to all the flows this is to be remembered to all the flows of the building with adequate pressure with adequate pressure even to the remotest fixture now you have some 10 to 15 flows or 200 flows building then you are supposed to use this at this uh, to 200th floor you need uh, you need to supply the water at 200th floor also so that has to be so at that sense what is the adequate pressure required to supply the water so we need we use lot of pumps and other systems to uh, send water from one point to the another point right so this much is something which we have to calculate before we finalize what size of pipes is required for building okay the next consideration which we are supposed to do is supply rate all fixtures will not be operated simultaneously which is a common thing and fulfill the required flow rate of the fixture having high rate of flow so uh now here the total water demand is something which we have calculated but here what we have to keep in mind is with respect to the typology of the building does all the fixtures operate simultaneously or not what type of building it is and uh, how to fulfill the required rate of the fixture rate of the uh, uh, fixture which is having the highest rate of flow so you need to be analyzing these factors also then after this we we'll have to find out gross supply rate rate gross demand of building is calculated by multiplying number of flats toilets with the highest float flat flow rate sorry so what happens is now we are just giving a example of flats used in a to uh, toilets in the flats that's just one example of building typology that is apartments um, uh, so it based on the typology of the building you have to find out the gross demand of the building okay with respect to each floors each flats of that and you know you need to find out what is the highest flow rate probability of simultaneous use depends on the type of the building and availability of the water so once you find out that that the last slide which i discussed about is been already been discussed in uh, first uh, module also just to give you a background uh, for the topic module 3 that was uh, discussed again in a brief format right so water supply piping now how do we provide now we know the water quantity what is the water demand required for particular building so we need to find out how to provide that right so here as we know it is always preferable to have uniform flow and pressure in all floors that is very important is all floors 
water piping systems must be the size of the pipe or the fixtures you use must be satisfying the uniform flow and pressure and for all the flows and in different places of the flows. So that is the criteria, main criteria for fixing the uh, sizes of the pipes, material, everything. So piping system to be adopted will differ when main supply is used. So that is one criteria. Now the water has to be supplied to us right before even getting from where do we get water. That is the main supply from the municipality or the corporation, whatever supplies for the city. So the main supply is used. We collect water from that, right? We are talking about mostly about the uh, water which is being taken from the uh, municipality or whatever. So the, then we have overhead uh, tank supply is used. So these are the different forms of supply used main supply overhead tank supply once the main supply is is done then we try to store it that is in overhead tank supply then we try to store it that is also not sufficient then we try to store it in underground and overhead tank supply then there is one more system pumped systems so all these are required for us to satisfy the criteria of requirement of water per capita, per day, per demand, right. So these are the different ways how we take the water inside. Now let us discuss little in detail about each of these. So in water supply piping system, we generally categorize them to cold water system in and hot water system that is with respect to particular building, right. So cold water system, hot water, hot water system. The way the piping is done for cold water and hot water is different. So in that let us start looking at types of cold water system. In cold water system we have a direct supply system and indirect supply system. In direct supply system it is nothing but the water is supplied directly from mains to fixtures. As I told earlier main supply is nothing but which is directly coming from the corporation or uh, any other uh, ser service oriented for water. So from there it comes to the uh, uh, goes to the each of the parts of the city. So the, from that we take directly to the houses or buildings. In indirect supply system water is first supplied to overhead tank and then distributed to each floors through gravitational methods which we generally use nowadays. So this is about cold water supply direct system right. In cold water supply direct system it is nothing but which where the water is directly taken from the main supply okay. So now main supply is there. So this image just shows how the main supply, the pipes are taken from there. So uh, the main supply is this and the raising main, we will have something called as raising main. That means from lower level to upper level if you have to transfer any fluid, we use this raising main, we raise the water. So that is called as raising main and from there the water is directly taken to the all the fixtures, you see bathtub here, you see all the uh, fixtures including kitchen sink, closet, wash basin, taps, everything you see here. So the complete water is transferred directly from the mains. That means the mains is running something like this on the road or something like that then you pull the water from there through the pipe and then transfer it. So here in direct system generally uh, it is not used currently we do not use much of this system because uh, there are a lot of advantages and disadvantages which we will discuss later slides may. So here what happens in the 
main supply the water is directly taken we have a small storage tank which is called as a cistern we'll have a cistern in the roof not which is exposed but it's like a open tank or a closed tank whatever at smaller quantity very smaller quantity and from there sometimes the except the sink all of the fixtures the water can be taken or else if the continuous flow of the water is there from the mains then we can take the pipes directly to all the fixtures and also as a backup we keep this system so that the water is there every time right So that is about, uh, that's the general uh, idea of what direct water supply is there. Now here, there are few things which we have to remember if we are using. Now it is actually not there at all mostly because lot of uh, problems and uh, issues like there will be no um, water supply continuously for the whole day. So there will be fluctuations in timings or maybe in some cities there is in the morning the water supply is in the morning or evening based on the timing. So this system is not much useful nowadays. So here if, if in case we are using this, here we have, uh, we need to remember that adequate water pressure should be there around the clock for this system and water is supplied to all the fixtures directly from the city main and uh, to reach number of floors like you say you have uh, 100 floors or 20 floors to reach the pressure is required which is there from directly in the main so that is also a, a problem nowadays that we will not be able to use the system because if the number of floors are more then there is no pressure for us to take direct supply from the mains okay uh, but in low, low rise buildings, this is quite convenient and economical to users. So in addition to normal supply, it requires an emergency storage which I was talking about, cisterns. Okay. It also needs a pressure reducing wall. Pressure, sometimes if the force is high, it might overflow. So pressure reducing walls from the mains to the building, in between you need to have the pressure reducing valve. So this is the schematic diagram of direct system. So what happens? You will have a city main that is the pipe here, then the water meter before uh, water meter is adapted in each building just before the water starts flowing into the building. Right? So that water meter then from there directly the water is supplied to each of the fixtures. This is a schematic diagram. Okay, that's about direct systems. Now cold water supply indirect systems. So in this cold water supply, it is nothing but you have an alternative storage in the building whether in the form of overhead tank or underground overhead tank that is the storage which we have which we can have in the buildings that means you store there and then you use it whenever you whenever it is convenient for usage so that is indirect in, it's not the, the coming directly from the mains but you have an alternative arrangement of having an overhead tank underground and overhead both and sometimes pumped systems also right so in this supply from overhead tank in that we we'll look at supply from overhead tank this is a general very general uh, schematic diagram which we easily can understand that from the city water means the water is directly going to the overhead water tank which is on top of the building right on top of the building OT, OHT overhead tank now from there from the bottom of the overhead tank you take the water the water supply is provided for all the 
fixtures right so that is supply from overhead tank so in the indirect system we have sub category supply for overhead tank except except for kitchen except for kitchen sink for all the other things we use overhead water tank water from overhead water tank for kitchens uh, the water is directly supplied but now based on number of floors in the building uh, it can be decided whether the mains should run to the number of floors or just wherever it is reachable based on the pressure of the water which is provided from the main supply if not the other thing is from the overhead water tank you can have connection to kitchen sink and as well as to all other fixtures which is required right the next one is underground and overhead water tank this is for indirect supply first we saw in indirect supply overhead water tank and then this is the other one underground and overhead water tank generally in conventional or colloquial uh, terminology or oh, underground tank we call it as sump right so this is one more from the mains after the water meter the water is let into the directly to the sump or underground water tank right from there then the water is again transferred to the oht that is overhead water tank from this overhead water tank below the water tank you connect the pipe and allow the pipe to flow the water so that it reaches all the fixtures in each floor so that is the basic difference from other we have this underground water tank and overhead water tank all of these has its own advantages and as well as disadvantages in pumped system this is one more uh, system mostly uh, not used commonly but uh, uh, if required it can also be used so this is pump system where from the city water mains after the water meter we have a underground water tank that is a storage is there underground but uh, the we can completely remove overhead water tank that is not required so what happens in this uh, water system is so in the underground water tank the water is filled from there to send to the all the building all the flows in the building we need to install pump so this pump this pump works uh, works with hydro pneumatic system right so this pump this is also called as hydro pneumatic pump so this pump has two things in it one is pressure tank with the water and another one is air compressor so what happens this pump when the water is required this pump activates itself that is automatic and whenever you open the tap wherever it is required whether it is kitchen or uh, uh, wash basin anything so whenever the um, uh, tap is open the air pressure is created here and then uh, the water is transferred from the underground tank to the required point so this is mostly ideal for existing building when we have existing building and there is no proper water supply so at that particular point you can just try to install this pump after the underground tank if there is no provision of making an overhead ground tank or whatever so at that particular point you can use this system so let's look at advantages and disadvantages from direct water supply system and indirect water supply system in direct water supply system water supply is continuous throughout the day 
and uh, disadvantage is if water supply is only for certain period in a day it is cumbersome. So what is happening is continuous is why because we have a small amount of storage as a backup and uh, it is assumed that there is continuous supply of water from the municipality. So that is why it is a, a kind of an a con, uh, advantage and then a disadvantage is in case something happens to the water supply in the mains then it is a major disadvantage that we don't will not have any water the uh, customer will not have any water. So if main supply is damaged then the problem is the water supply will be stopped for the whole house and also the other advantage uh, uh, this thing is it requires less maintenance than indirect water. So indirect water supply system what happens the advantage is since we have storage alternative storage whether it is underground or over a tank the continuous supply of water is there irrespective of main supply um, uh, uh, the discontinuation in main supply or something like that. So here we will have continuous water supply at, at your particular house or building. Only problem is this is little, econo uh, little expensive because the water pipes has to be taken from over it to the uh, under uh, underground to the over it tank from there again to the all the fixtures the water has to be transferred so and pumps has to be installed. So there is more economic uh, expensive this is more expensive than direct system and the other problem is in the overhead tanks sometimes there is a danger of uv rays if the water is not closed the lid is not closed or the water is not closed it is in case it is exposed to the atmosphere there is a danger in danger of uv rays affecting the water right so that is about hot water and cold water system uh, sorry cold water system cold water supply systems now we have hot water supply piping systems okay now here we use hot water for general things like uh, bathing cleaning sometimes cooking etc right so uh, it can be installed by uh, we can get hot water by geysers or boilers right or else we uh, 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 you can have a centralized hot water system also or this is for small hot less ho less water demand less hot water demands geysers and boils if you really need a continuous hot water supply then we can go for centralized hot water supply also right so in that case uh, uh, while providing hot water supply we have, will have to consider few things like length of supply pipe increases heat dissipation see now uh, centralized hot water system like somewhere you will have a tank and then the water has to be supplied to the ground floor or to the top floor then there is a heat dis dissipation happening in the pipe right so the length of the supply pipe increases heat dissipation heat dissipation recirculation of water is required for prompt availability of hot water to overcome the wastage of heat you imagine now from uh, uh, ground floor to uh, uh, from the base basement or from the terrace if you have a centralized water system from there to get it to the farer farthest floor you will have to provide the pipe and in that pipe the hot water dissipation when the hot water is supplied heat dissipation happens and there is a wastage of heat also it might become cold also at certain point so there is a wastage of heat so there should be a return pipe which is provided from the remotest point of the hot water mains and here how does the hot water flow this is something which we have to remember thermosiphonic action so for hot water this action is very much required it works with 
thermosiphonic action. So, what is thermosiphonic action? Right? This is a general diagram which uh, is explaining what is thermosiphonic action. So, what happens is uh, we have overhead water tank and the taps, overhead uh, uh, taps, hot water taps everywhere. Okay. So, from the hot water, overhead water tank through the gravity, the water, cold water is coming to the centralized hot water system or geyser or whatever. From here, now it has to teach, reach the top floors or top layers of the building. Then the hot water moves through the air pressure from bottom to the top. Because, because here it is heated, it has air pressure more than the cold water. Because of the difference between the air pressure from the cold water and the pipe, the um, hot water raises in the piping. So, that is thermosiphonic action. Circulation of hot water from main pipe and return line can occur without the aid of the pump. So, you see this is the return line. This water should be returned back to the hot water storage area. Right? So, difference in the density of water at different temperatures is the thermosiphonic action which allows the hot water because of the air pressure to move up, which moves up. Boiler should be placed below the point of supply and situated for smaller installation. Right? Now, piping system can be done for hot water, piping system can be done with forced circulation. So, natural thermosiphonic pressure, when the natural thermosiphonic pressure of the water, hot water is low, then you will have to force the circulation for movement of the water. So, larger installation require additional pressure, helps in using, red, using reduced pipe sizes. When we start using forced circulation, that means either it could be pump or anything which you use for forced circulation of hot water, the pipe size of pipe size can be reduced. Circulation pump must be designed to overcome frictional losses within the circuit. Pump should not be used as a booster pump to increase pressure in hot water lines. Yeah. So, one is through natural system that is thermosiphonic action we can uh, uh, supply the water, hot water. The other one is by forced circulation. In the forced circulation we might have to use pumps. So, that is what we saw in the last two slides. But here there are again two different ways of uh, circulating the water that is down feed system and up feed system. That is when we have the storage on the top of the building or at the bottom. Based on that, wherever the facility is available, we can provide it. So, now here, so this is down feed system where the boiler is there and based on that the water is connected to the uh, top flows and then it is again recirculated through the, uh, through the reverse uh, piping that is which is the water hot water is recirculated to the pipe boiler and then again it goes to the up that is up feed and then down feed right. So, that is about uh, hot water system. Then we have water flushing. Water flushing generally what happens this is uh, a method used to clean the pipes. So, water flushing is a method used to clean the pipes. So, this method is mostly used in the main lanes, main lines of a city. Say for example, you have a pipe which is running in front of the uh, house, hot water, uh, water pipe, whatever, cold water pipe. So, there you use this method to 
clean the pipe. We know that when the water is continuously flowing through a pipe, whether it can be scored, the internal surface of a pipe can be scored, that means scratches can happen, abrasion can happen, uh, it can develop uh, al algae in the, uh, on the surface of the inner surface of the pipe. So, to clean that water flushing is happens. Generally, the terminology explains that you flush the water into the pipe so that with that force everything which is around the internal surface is removed. So, that is something which we are trying to tell. Water flushing is a pipe cleaning method that entails jetting high pressure. Now, if we have a pipe, now if we have a pipe like this, right, here we allow the water with, jet the water with high pressure and high velocity water. So, it is allowed and then it cleans up the internal surface and then it is washed out. So, that is about water flushing. So, jetting high pressure high velocity water through a sewer cleaning nozzle for a prescribed number of passes. This cannot be done once. This jetting of water should be done for prescribed number of times. Based on the size of the pipe, it has been, uh, you can decide how many times can be flushed out. Okay. Flushing of the sewer pipe is used to remove debris such as sediments, roots, concrete calcite, etc. Based on the material of pipes, it, uh, whether it is cement or concrete or GI, whatever, based on that sediments will be there, roots will be there, concrete, calcite, so many other things are developed in the pipe. So, to remove them is some, uh, this kind of method is used. And flushing the water main lines also ensures that fire hydrants are operational. So, when this is also done in a city level, right. So, in city, line, uh, city level, we also know that fire hydrants are used at each area. So, that uh, uh, the water is uh, provided during the fire hazard, fire hazards, okay. So, that is, so, so when we do this for the city level, the water is available even for the fire hydrants at any point of time. So, this is terminology is used mostly, mostly for the city level cleaning. The next topic we have is uh, piping at sunken slab. Now, we know what is sunken slab. So, we have a section here. Sunken slab is nothing but for particular usage that is for the toilet especially. The slab is sunken that means it is taken from the well level of the floor taken below. Okay. So, now what happens? Why do we need this sunken slab? So, if you see in the building level it looks like that. When we see in detail this will be the normal floor level in the all level other level other uh, areas of uh, toilets. Now, from here you can have a sunken slab. This is one way of having a sunken slab. This is a sunken slab, right. So, you see RCC is taken below. So, that floor RCC is taken below. So, what happens in that sunken slab? In that toilet, now this is a pan, Indian pan and the pipes, now the Indian pipe uh, pan is in the same level. So, the pipes are taken below. If not, what happens? You will have to take it on the top. You will have to raise the floor. Raised floor will be provided. So, because this pan requires this much of space to insert the fixtures, right. So, this level has to be matched so that you take a sunken slab, whatever is required that much you take the sunken slab. Now, that is the pipe is taken out from the wall. So, you do not see any pipes on the uh, floor. This is uh, another way of doing sunken slab 
same as it is. Uh, now, uh, this is the general flooring level. Now, what happens is now I can install the commode here. I can install the commode here. So, this level can be same. So, the sunken slab is nothing but you have the that the area of the toilet is gone below. So, the it has to start from the roof, right? From the, the roof has to take it on and come to the lower level. So, here finally what happens they cover this with a sand and other uh, uh, broken material other materials required. So, here this is covered the commode water is taken below the uh, floor line and then taken outside the wall and connected to the outside pipe. So, that is the detail of uh, how the pipe taken from the fixture and then connected to the vertical pipe. Okay. So, here we have again uh, um, third way of doing sunken slab. Now, here blue color which you see is a finished floor level of a toilet. This black color is something which is below. So, that means this uh, be below this finished floor level we have a gap of around 100 mm. 150 mm. So, in that all the pipes are taken wash basin pipe, commode pipe and uh, if you have traps, floor traps, floor trap pipes everything will be taken below that. So, that you get a clean finished line with respect to the external flooring. Now, sunken areas we saw. Now, how piping can be taken from the toilet areas without sunken slab. Now, if we do not have sunken slab and the floor is straight, what can we do? We can have a pipes in the similar way, but we are supposed to provide a vertical shafts. So, vertical shafts can be provided and you can even take the pipes downwards, but the below you need to cover it with the fall ceiling. Now, if we have a provision of fall ceiling, we can do that easily. You can just provide without going for a sunken slab, we can just have a fall ceiling and then take the pipes directly outside. Now, here what happens? This is with respect to the shaft. This what you see is a shaft, vertical shaft behind the building or behind the toilet or wherever. So, um, this toilet area where we have here neither we have fun, uh, sunken slab or neither we have fall ceiling. So, what happens the water which is used is directly taken from the wall in the shaft directly the shaft all the pipes are let into the shaft and this is connected till the bottom. This is just an image to show how the pipes as we generally know that electrical pipes all the water supply pipes everything runs HVAC pipes can run below the uh, above the fall ceiling below the floor above the fall ceiling you see this fall ceiling grid and the floor here in that between space you see you can see the pipes running. There are a lot of advantages and disadvantages whether we use sunken slab or shafts or fall ceiling areas. So, what happens is all the pipes are concealed, pipes are not visible anyways. So, it is concealed in the floor. Nowadays, people also use ledged wall so that below the behind the wall it can be taken. Ledged wall is nothing but now say for example. this is a room, you have a ledge wall here. 
right. So, all the pipes are taken in the ledge wall and they directly taken outside. Ledge wall is something which is just in front of the wall. So, you do not even pierce the wall, it can directly go into that and then it some or the other point it has to be taken outside. So, it can be taken outside directly. So, there are different ways of doing piping for uh, toilets. Uh, basically, it is done to conceal the pipes in the floor and height of the space will be, uh, when we use sunken slab, the height of the space, inner space will be reduced and uh, to do sunken slab, we need experienced labor or skilled labor, okay. That is about how piping can be done for toilet areas. Now we have house drainage. So, what is house drainage is nothing but all the drainage which is mostly connected in the toilet areas and uh, um, all the activities which is related to toilet, kitchen, wet areas is drained off properly to the sewers, public sewers. So, while we are draining out the sewer, uh, draining out the pipes, uh, draining out the waste, wastage, there are few things which has to be considered, right. The sewers are to be situated by the side of the building rather than the below. Drains, draining pipes, whether it is vertical draining pipe or horizontal draining pipe, it has to be laid straight, okay. Between the inspection chambers, it should be ventilated properly. Any equipment which we use for uh, sanitation should be ventilated properly, any equipment. Okay, it should have uh, enough number of traps, traps is something which we will discuss in the next slides and uh, joints should be watertight, sewer should be laid at proper gradient, this is very important, the sewer lines, sewer lines is nothing but the pipelines should be laid at a gradient so that there is an easy flow from the uh, source to the end point. Okay, the layout should be such that it should be clean, easily cleanable and removable. Material of sewer should be non-absorbent and earth cushioning. Sewage form should be conveyed as early as possible. Adequate size of maximum discharge is required. The size of the pipe should be adequate so that maximum discharge happens for the house drainage. Thank you.